All right, so welcome. I'm SC, I'm the founder of Products That Count. It's great to see some new faces and some familiar faces. Uh, who has been here before? Yeah, it's about half the crowd. That's our usual ratio. We love people who come back. <laughs> we have a name for them. We call them the members that count. <laughs> and if you, if you come like three, four times a year, I, I forget the exact number, sorry, three or four, um, we, we actually uh, make you an official uh, member that counts, and, and we give you some perks. Um, so you get a free invitation to our holiday party. Uh, you get um, a discount to all of our events for next year. Uh, you get a cool card that looks like this. Yep, it's worth it. Um, all right, so um, it, it's, it's great to, to have you here. Products that count is um, three and a half years old. We have uh, 50 to 70 events a year in uh, many cities, and uh, in each of our, our, our events, we get anywhere from you know, 50 to 250 uh, people, depending on you know, the location, the time of year. So um, you're part of a, a global network of, of product folks, and, and I'm very excited to, uh, to have um, you know, uh, such smart and, and curious and, and uh, interesting people to hang out with uh, so often. Uh, this would not be possible without our partners. Uh, our partners, I'll start with Yelp, uh, who is amazing. Uh, Yelp is our host here in San Francisco. They've been with us from day one. Uh, it's an amazing team to, to work for. If you're interested in careers at Yelp, you can go right over there where you see behind you the uh, big red Yelp sign, and Rebecca will, will chat with you about careers. Uh, they're also hiring engineers, uh, not just product folks, um, and, and they're a great team. We also um, have a, a partner that I'm really proud to also be an investor in, Amplitude. Uh, they provide a, an analytics platform that's really easy to use and that provides very actionable insights. Um, they, uh, they're also a, a killer team, and, and I really recommend if you're looking for an analytics solution for your team that you, you check them out. We also have MParticle as a partner. MParticle is a great solution if you're looking for a, a service that will um, aggregate your data and, and make sense of them. If you have a lot of different systems that don't really communicate well with one another, this is a very, very solid solution. And then finally, Pragmatic Marketing is also a long-term partner of products that count, and they offer some great trainings. You can go to their website, pragmaticmarketing.com. You'll see some of their um, upcoming training. So I'm very thankful for these partners because they make all of our programs possible. One thing that uh, is really unique about products that count is that every time we uh, invite a speaker, first of all, we, we pick a, an executive, like a C-level, who's been like really building products at scale for a long time and has developed a set of best practices that they're interested to share. And then we ask them that they share something that they've never shared before. So some folks say, hey, I'm gonna create a brand new talk. Like last year, half of our speakers created a brand new set of best practices that they shared at one of our events. And then others say, well, I have some stuff that you know, I know is really insightful and interesting, but I'm gonna add a new best practice or a new case study. And then we post all of that content to our website. If you go to www.productsaccount.com, you can watch the videos of pretty much all of our talks. So tonight, I'm really, really excited to hear Alex. Alex and I have known each other for a couple of years. I think you've attended some of our executive events uh, back when you were at Intuit, right, leading products. Um, and now you're at Asana, which is not just a product that has a lot of scale, but it's a product that many of us are using and, and love. So um, I'm really excited to hear uh, your talk and, and welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. You guys don't have anything else to do besides hang out with a bunch of PMs? <laughs> we do that all day. Um, no, seriously, thank you very much for coming out. And um, it's fun being with my people. So. Um, I can't wait to, I'm glad I was able to meet a couple of you in the back, and I can't wait to, to spend a little time with you just now and then meeting with you afterwards. Um, let's get started. 
Um, I work at a company called Asana. I talk a little bit about Asana. Um, I'm going to talk about winning a market by building flow. Does anybody know what flow is? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the, the answer was um, psychological flow, like getting into the flow of work. You know, for me, flow is kind of like when a jazz band plays together. They're able to like riff off each other, and they can kind of end each other's phrases. And like it just even most recently in soccer, the best soccer teams, the best sport teams, they kind of have a flow as well. Like they um, have the ability to pass off each other. They can anticipate each other's moves. And there's something kind of magical and delightful of being in flow. Have you ever felt that flow before with a team? All right, well, that's what we try to do at Asana, is actually like create flow, uh, create flow um, on teams. So I'm, gonna, I'm gonna talk a bunch about that um, in a minute. So just a little bit about me. Um, I started at uh, NASDAQ, and I've got product in quotes because PMing wasn't really around back in that day, but I was an economic analyst. And what that meant is that I looked at all the data from the stock exchange. We contemplated the stock exchange software working in different ways to create different rules. And then we ran a bunch of trade data back through it to see what all the implications would be. And then we would then go and code that up in software. Um, then I moved, I went to business school here in Berkeley, um, spent a bunch of time at Intuit, um, left Intuit to become the head of product at a company called TubeMogul, which was later acquired by Adobe, and now that's Adobe's advertising cloud. Um, and then went back to Intuit to be head of QuickBooks, um, and now I'm head of product at Asana. Um, this is how to get at me. Um, we're hiring, San Francisco and New York. Um, but you know, before you email me, you, want to just, you might want to just see what I have to say first. <laughs> All right, so we talked about flow, um, and, and flow is we're, we're trying to get teamwork to really occur at Asana. So I want to talk about how we think about that for our customers, like how do we get teams who use Asana to get into that flow? But then also, how do you create flow on your own team, um, your own team of PMs? Who, who here manages PMs? Yeah, there's a few. Who here feels like they need to do some management of their manager sometimes? You're being shy, there's more hands than that. All right, so um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the Asana story, number one, because I love telling it, um, but it's, it is a good context to some of the examples that we're gonna talk about about building flow. So Asana was started um, by a co-founder of Facebook named Dustin Moskovitz in the social network um, and an early engineer. And they built this internal system called Tasks. They built it because nobody knew what the hell everybody else was doing. And even then, when it was a smaller company, they spent so much time trying to update status with each other that they weren't actually spending that much time coding anymore. So they built this system to try and create accountability and to really give visibility in who's doing what by when, like what's the plan of record. Um, eventually, those two left, and Asana launched its first product in 2012. Now we've got about 40,000 paying customers, millions of users. Um, it's like we have a million, of, millions of team members in 195 countries, and we're kind of like the emerging industry leader in the category of work management, which is a boring way of talking about flow. Um, this is, the th this is why I'm passionate about this problem set, um, because I've spent so much time as a PM. This chart here is from a McKinsey study, um, and it tried to find out how much, where people spent their day. And um, about 40% was actual work, like moving the ball forward getting thoughts from here, synthesis into, into, into a page, creating a deck. Um, coordination, uh, coordination of work, or we call work about work, was 60% of the time. You know, does that resonate with anybody? Yeah, like if not more, right? Um, and that's like internal communication, like getting your team to work together, going getting on somebody else's backlog, 
gathering information, email, like the work about work is absolutely killer. And for people who like to build stuff, like I like to build stuff, man, all that time spent doing all the politicking and communication, reading email and responding and not paying attention to my kids because I'm doing some kind of fire drill, that's nonsense. So we, in, um, but we kind of see ourselves as a, a coordination across content and communication. So your content needs to live somewhere, the work product, and then communications need to go on somewhere too. But in the communications, like in email and Slack, for instance, like it's so often the time that the plan of record just like falls away. And that thing that somebody said that they were gonna do, nobody else can find that thing ever again. Content, like that's not really the place to, to collaborate except for like building out the thinking. But like that content needs to be linked to like the plan of record, coordinated in a way. So spreadsheets can't really do this, though we do a lot of tracking of projects together in, in spreadsheets, right? That's probably like the primary tool. Um, and then there's like this traditional gnarly project management tool that traditional product project managers love that um, non that traditional product managers probably hate. So um, it's a different way. So we call it work management. And, uh, and also teams rely on it for their projects like mapping out, um, hitting your deadline and all your processes to who's doing what by when, kind of creating the plan of record. I'm telling you this because number one, I want you to use Asana, but more importantly, um, it's good context into some of the examples I'm gonna use around building flow. All right, yeah, so what's the result of all this thing? We, um, we sent a survey to our customers who pay us, our premium customers, and we asked them um, how much more efficient does this actually make you over just like using email and Slack and, and all that kind of stuff. And they say, hey, 45% more efficient. We were hoping for five. So I don't know if this is biased or not. I didn't like dig into it, but like, Somebody out there says that they're getting like two days back a week because of more efficiency, because of less nonsense and work about work, which makes me very exciting. Here is a big insight that I learned at Intuit. Now this is like, this, this is uh, getting into the part about building flow. Your teams have a way that they operate right now. And for them to adopt a new solution or a new way of doing things, like the bar's pretty high, right? So if you go and introduce a new tool, it's kind of like you've got skin in the game and you want that to succeed or you're gonna look dumb. So um, we spent a lot of time thinking about what's the right way to onboard teams to actually get into that flow in our product. Because I'll tell you, I use that product all day every day. I don't use email anymore. It's amazing. Um, and like you actually do feel like oh, this stuff is getting done. Like, um, I'm seeing my, the work on my team actually coming to life, which is beautiful. But getting teams to adopt is, is quite difficult because they have their own standard course. And it's a very, very high bar of creating something that is so, so different and great that, they, that um, customers can't imagine going back to the old way of doing things. So um, at Intuit, um, somebody ran this really interesting regression looking at lots of different uh, first use experiences. And they looked at the net promoter score um, variance among all these different first use experiences out there in the world. And they found that 75% of the variance is based on three things. Creating a, having a benefit that I care about front and center. Um, having, uh, making it really, really easy. And for me, that just means like very short time to benefit consumption. And then third is having a positive emotion happen in the first like X minutes. Those are like the key. And for me, this is a playbook that I've used over and over again, first at Intuit and now at Asana, to get teams to adopt it, to, to adopt different things. So let's first talk about benefit I care about. We'll use it in the context of Asana. Um, the old first use experience was like, hey, move work forward, sort of a generic, um, a generic marketing message on a web page, and then you went through a first first setup experience, and it sort of dropped you here, and like those little that little like bloody teardrop thing, um, that was like supposed to tell you what you should do first, but with a really horizontal product, 
um, it's hard to get teams to actually understand what the heck they should do next and why it's right for them. So um, getting to a benefit that they care about is, is a challenge for a horizontal product, and this is what we're doing. Um, we now buy search terms that are based on lots of different use cases, particularly around marketing, because that's one of our sweet spots, and we're expanding to further. So you can type in, like, how the hell do I work with my agency on getting my creative scenario sorted out as a marketer, and Asana pops up. Then based on that, we get you to a Asana landing page that's been customized for that very specific use case. Then we drop you specifically into the template around how projects are set up that's based on that use case, and voila, like you are there. And we're doing that like we we're starting out with marketing, and we've seen a 10% increase in conversion just from like some early experimentation on right for me flow um, that is tailored to specific segments. Buddy with me? Great. So I mentioned getting to benefit early, um, a benefit that I care about. Now I'm gonna talk about ease, which for me is really time to benefit. Another playbook here is get your data science team to figure out what are the actions that a customer takes in X period of time that are most correlated with conversion? Like both times, both at QuickBooks and at Asana, we've done that. We've done a logistical regression, and you get yourself an odds ratio um, for these actions that occur. And then you can see the odds that if you take these act, if a customer takes these actions, how likely they are to actually convert. That's gold, right? So we know that in Asana, this is Asana here, if you create a task, if you comment on a task, and if you, at and you assign a task to another person, that's gold. Like that is like 11x more powerful driving conversion than anything else. So now we're really, really focused on getting people to take those actions because when they consume those actions, they're consuming the benefit that they're here, they're here trying to get, which is around flow and collaboration. They can kind of see how the thing works in front of their eyes, and that's when we got them. So um, we've built a first use experience that's all around just driving people to those specific three actions. You can see here we've got this, a banner on the bottom. We've, got, we've revised the teardrop thing to make these purple things. So like we're experimenting here on driving people to these core actions. And then we measure the heck out of it. Um, I am the adoption owner across our company. And this is how I am, one of the ways that I am measured. Um, this is the percentage of folks who, um, who do three specific core actions in their first seven days. The core actions that we care about the most. And then we know that that is a leading indicator to one of our very most uh, important adoption metrics is the lagging indicator, right? So um, really nailing, getting, that, getting people to do these core actions in a very short period of time that the data tells you is the most important is a great formula to uh, get a team to adopt. Okay, the third thing is positive emotion. In Asana, when you complete a task, literally, unicorns fly out of the software. <laughs> Watch it again, you're gonna love it. It's even better the second time. <laughs> that's a Yeti, that's a narwhal. I don't, that's a parrot or something. Um, a it's a phoenix, yes. Um, like, customers like have a surprise and delight moment. And a surprise and delight moment up front is gets you that positive energy. Um, and, and customers, like we asked in a survey recently, what makes Asana magical? Because I, I want to see what we can capitalize on. And they're like, all the time, it's like, a unicorn. <laughs> um, hey, I want to take you through another just very quick example of using this playbook to get customers to adopt um, your offering. Um, I used to be in charge of QuickBooks, and here's a couple of great examples. QuickBooks Pro is like a couple hundred bucks. Um, these are the old desktop models, but they still sell them, and it's still a billion-dollar business. 
QuickBooks Premier is like 150 bucks more. They are substantially similar products. There are a few additional lines of code in Premier that then the over Pro, but Premier markets itself by segment. It's Premier for retail, Premier for um, for manufacturing, Premier for wholesale. That and like a couple of different names, a couple of different reports in the product. By just segmenting and showing a customer a, ben a, a benefit that they know that we know that they care about and speaking their language, able to charge one hundred and fifty dollars for roughly the same software, and then N then the NPS was like ten points higher. Another way that we did it at QuickBooks was um, we would go through a first use experience where we'd ask you about yourself and ask you about your business. And then we had an animation sequence where we, where we built QuickBooks for you. Um, and we figured out how many folks in photographic services were in your zip code or state and who were our customers because we had a big scale as an industry leader. Um, and then we then could take a look at the types of things that customers had already customized in their QuickBooks files, and we would apply those same things to your QuickBooks file on the way in. So when you got in, it's like, oh, this thing's kind of like set up for photographers. So um, a benefit that you care about speaks to you. Um, also in QuickBooks, we did that logistical regression, and it turns out that um, in accounting software, if you can get somebody to upload their logo, they are very likely to convert. So we built this thing, which is a, like kind of a simple invoice customization tool. People add their logo, and we got that whole thing done. And the surprise and delight moment was, we're like, hey, you know what? Send, just take a look at how professional you look now. Send this sample invoice to Intuit and just see what happens. So you can kind of like see what the flow is. And we pay them 10 bucks. So they would actually see $10 then go into their account because a payment reconciled into QuickBooks has 11x the, the conversion power of any other action. So that regression that you can run around these core actions is really important and capitalize the heck on those things. All right, so those were like my product onboarding tips of how Asana, for instance, like gets people to get into flow, like start to collaborate in the product. Um, now I wanted to talk a little bit about creating flow on your own team. Um, PMing is not easy. Um, and managing PMs is also not easy. So there's a lot of head nodding, I see that. So I, through trial and error, at least have my own playbook that I wanted to share with you all. How am I doing on time, good? Perfect, right. Good. So um, what PM looks like when it really stinks is you go into your meetings and like somebody is expecting that you have done this, but you're actually in a different phase in the product. You've come up with a solution, but like turns out somebody else wanted you to solve a different problem. Um, it, 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 you get feedback at uh, a different level of fidelity than your screens actually are. Because you're, you're thinking low, but you're getting feedback at high. Has that ever happened to you? It happens, yeah, it's pretty rough. Um, and then there's lack of alignment in teams. So we at, uh, at Intuit have done some things um, to create like a standardized process. The intent here is not to like create a bunch of work about work in PMing, but the intent is to be able to hire people, onboard them, give them the toolkit of how to PM, like as a reference document, and make it really fair so that managers know what they should be doing at all times in the product process, and employees know, or PMs know what answer, what questions they should be answering. Because that's where like a bunch of the mismatch happens is where like, you don't know which phase you're in. Does anybody use a double diamond framework like this? You ever seen this before? Yeah, it's kind of like, it, it, at Intuit it's called Design for Delight. Um, at IDEO, I think they use this. In some places it's called the double diamond. 
The double diamond is making sure that you figure out the pain before the solution. It also makes sure that you do um, divergent thinking before you do convergent thinking. This is the way that better things happen. When you don't follow this way and you think about the solution before you really understand the customer pain, really bad things happen. Um, so just to like give you an example of what this is like, you, you might get a like half-baked idea from somebody like, hey, go figure out how we can save some more of our customers' money. So you'd, um, you'd go and you'd do a broad discovery process. Um, it doesn't have to be long, but it, but it should be broad of thinking of all the different ways that your product could help save customers' money. And then you narrow, 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 narrow in to a very specific pain point that a customer has. Right? So you look at all the pains in the whole world, and you zero in on a very, very specific pain for a very specific customer, and that's your reference point. That's how you can always know if your solution is going to be good. Like, really keep that and align your team around it. Then you go brainstorm, you think of all the different potential solutions, and you go narrow and narrow and narrow and narrow and narrow in on what is the right solution, either by experimenting, shipping stuff, and having multiple versions of it, and you iterate that way. Now, what what I've tried to do on the team at Asana is <coughs> make it really clear what's expected throughout the process here. And I've done that by basically like publishing the answer key. Now what I mean by that is these are like meetings that we have. We have something called product forum and product forum um, takes one of these shapes. So in the discovery debrief, I've got a template. And it's like, these are, the custom, these are the exact questions I'm going to ask you. So prepare for these things. This is what you should be doing when you have done your full discovery around the pain, all the different pain points around a particular subject matter area. Then this is what the output should look like when you've defined your target pain and you have a very narrow customer definition. That should live here. Those, like, you know, um, this is a, a practice that's used in, in lots of different organizations, PMing, but I definitely learned it at Intuit. Then, um, once you've got your customer pain, put it in words that your team can totally make sense and understand how big it is, um, and answer these questions. Start to get your marketer involved. So PMM means that product marketers can start to contribute to the spec. So there's alignment early once you've identified the target customer in pain. Then solution kickoff really is like, okay, what the heck do we think we're actually gonna build? And it should be a vision. Every PM should have a vision, like even if you're brand new. Like that's the kind of exciting part because you wanna go as far out in thinking of ima imagining what amazing is as quickly as possible in super low fidelity and then work backwards to something that's super amazing. So the solutions kickoff is like, well, what is this vision? Where are we going to start? How are we actually going to work backwards on this thing? And then once we um, really figure out what we're going to build for our V1, we start to do a spec review. Um, and like these are the questions that I ask during the spec review. So I also have, like, I also have um, a full-on template filled out for a fake project. So I've defined what I expect and what good looks like. So that a PM who's kind of just starting out can see all this stuff and be like, oh, okay, well, this is what Alex kind of meant. Like, this is how you uh, approach this specific question. Like, this is the fidel fidelity that's required at the time. So because we all know what's expected at the different times in the process, um, then you're in a place where you are going to be much more successful with your manager. And you're going to be doing the process that IDEO and Intuit and a bunch of others who use the double diamond um, actually know is the better process, pain before solution, divergent before convergent, narrow target customer, narrow pain point, and then go in exploration and, and narrow, narrow, narrow. So I just wanted to show you those things as an example because um, if you're a manager of PMs, that mismatch happens all the freaking time, right? But, and if you're a, an ICPM, it might be the opportunity to like set the table with your manager around like, yeah, 
what is expected, let's get clear on what is expected exactly at the phase of the project that we're in right now so I can get the best feedback out of you possible. You know what I mean? Train the trainer. Great, so we talked about creating flow for your customers. And really, um, the, the insight I wanted to bring to bear is that to get to somebody to adopt, you need to have a real clear benefit that they care about. Um, you need to be able to make the time to value very, very short. Um, and you need to have some kind of surprise and delight moment up front. Do that logistical uh, regression to figure out what are the biggest opportunities, and then just go mine that and measure it. Creating the flow for your own team, Set up a place where everybody knows um, what phase they're in, put problem before solution, and get really clear with your manager around expectations so you don't get caught in the low-fi, high-fi trap or um, different expectations in product form. It's all yetis and unicorns. So we went through a ton of material, and I really thank you for all of your attention. Um, I'm definitely open up for some questions, and um, we're hiring. Yeah. You got it. We're hiring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have a question about the ten dollar gift program. Yeah. Uh, how did you deal with uh, scammers, preventing scammers from taking it? Yeah, great question. It was not the easiest program to implement. I'll tell you that. Uh, oh, the question was like, hey, in QuickBooks, you had this program where, in the first use experience, you signed up and you got ten bucks back. How'd you keep getting scammed? The um, QuickBooks Payments is a pretty big business and they have a bunch of loss prevention capability. So you'd sign up for a payment account before we give you the 10 bucks as the part of the invoicing onboarding flow. Um, so we kind of knew who you were. And then we're like, you know, but in the, we did a scrappy test up front and we didn't care if we lost some money. Um, but that's when we saw that it was a jump and we were able to um, capitalize it at its scale. Yeah. It's a leap of faith. Yeah, the question is, like, is it correlation or causation? You just told us to like, go and find something that are correlated with conversion. Um, but it might not be causal. That's a leap of faith. But it's worked for me twice. You know, We've gotten over 10% gains both times that we've, I've tried this playbook. And I do think it is, in a broad horizontal product, like both like QuickBooks, where like any small business can use it, and Asana, like anybody can use it who's running a project, getting them to be able to consume the most important benefits that you know resonate. That's really the teaching here. Um, and that's, that's the takeaway. Um, and it's a leap of faith to see if it improves, but it's always improved when I've tried it. Yeah, right, the logistical regression gives, also just gives you the odds. And, and it's, it's, it's pretty darn close from what I've seen. Yeah. Uh, at Asana for the double diamond uh, procedure, Yep. Yeah, great question. Yeah, the, the question is like, so in, in Double Diamond, how does it fit into like KRs and goals, which we do, we do do that. Um, and also who, who figures out what ideas are gonna get um, resourced. So at Asana is a pretty special place. Um, and the, the company actually shuts down twice a year and does something called Roadmap Week. That's where the company comes together and figures out what are the biggest opportunities. We have Roadmap Week the first week of August, and teams are all preparing for it now. What are the biggest opportunities for us collectively? And then what spills out of Roadmap Week actually is the next set of things that teams are gonna go and do the discovery and building process on top of. So it's pretty awesome, because anybody who's got a great idea um, match, can match up with any other idea, um, and we decide collectively how we're gonna make this awesome. Um, the second question was, um, um, second question was. Yeah, who uh, takes charge of the initial ideation process? The PMs, the designers, uh, UX team? Uh, 
Oh yeah, okay. So in the, if particularly in the discovery phase, the best way to do it is just to have your intact team. Now, not the whole, the whole team often isn't totally assigned all the way up in the process, but you definitely need um, research, design, and like a tech lead or an engineering lead. And then it's, maybe it's okay, not ideal, but okay if the engineers join later. But the best product come when everybody discovers everything along the way and has that big aha, the sleuthing, and the big discoveries that make PMing so much fun. When your whole team does that together, your team will be more, co more cohesive and actually be more in the flow. Um, back here. Yeah, well, I mean, there's some train. Yeah, the, the the question is like, what do you do if a team is off track? Like they they're on a they're they're doing something that's out of order. Well, there's some training to it. Like this is I couldn't just roll this out and have have folks accept it right away. There actually is. Um, we've rolled it out. We've done trainings in it in PM land at Asana, um, and teams do go off track all the time. Um, and there's a, there's a place for that. So there's a, there's a place that's like low risk to get teams on board. So like a group product manager type or a, what we call a pillar lead at Asana, they work with teams directly to make sure that they're getting great answers to those questions in that right order. And then when everybody feels like they've got the right rigor in place, it comes to product forum, which is like those specific areas on the double diamond that I, that I called out. Um, and it, it's it, actually, I'm going to give away an interview question. A great interview question for a manager of PMs is like, how can you sniff out when things are going off track? And that really is part of the art form of being a, a manager of PMs is just really knowing when things are screwed up so you can nudge it on track without it, things racing off the track. What else you got? Back here. Yeah, if you want, I was actually thinking about maybe doing a blog post. Would that be interesting to like get the, the product methodology on there? Okay, cool. Great. You know, there's a, I work with this amazing person, Jackie Bavaro. Have you heard of her? She wrote the book, Cracking the PM, Cracking the Case, Cracking the PM Interview. Um, so she's a prolific blogger. I'm like a, an understudy compared to her. Um, but uh, she and I are going to work on something like this anyway. Yeah. Yeah, the question is, when you're looking for issues in product, um, do you rely on, how do you see the, the role of data science um, versus the role of user research? Well, data science, we run A-B tests all the time, not necessarily because, like, we're not Google, so we don't have all this flow. You know, we, we sell to, we saw how many customers, so many paying customers we have, you know, like millions of users, but it's not, um, at the size, so it does take us a while to run tests. But we run tests that cover a lot of different metrics. So when we ship something, we know that it screws up collaboration, because remember, like, we're really careful about measuring to make sure that all that collaboration is occurring. If we see that fewer tasks are being completed, um, then data science will instruct us to help, to help us think through rolling it back. But the thing that's the magic is, at Asana, we dog food all day, every day, which means that Every, the, 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 the kitchen staff is using Asana. Um, and we have really good kitchen staff. Um, but the kitchen staff is using Asana. And um, everybody's passionate about making that thing better. Um, and everybody knows when you've made a really tough trade-off because they're not afraid to share with you the other side of that trade-off. Go ahead. How long do you keep that graph around? How often are you looking at it versus just moving on to a new experiment or? 
Yeah, we use um, a KR process at Asana where after roadmap week, when the company sets its strategy and everybody is, uh, has an opportunity to, to have, it, have a say, then teams go and set their roadmap and KRs. Um, KRs are the key results or, or the, and, um, and the goals and they're tracked in Asana, of course. Um, and this is for the period of time that was the KR uh, of that graph that I, I showed. It was like from, from a little while ago. Yeah. What actions are you taking at the Senate to develop your product managers? What actions am I taking to develop the product managers? I live for coaching product managers. It's like what makes me uh, super happy. It's like my calling in this life. Besides being a dad, maybe. Um, and maybe someday I'll get to golf, but not yet. Um, what, what are the, I, the best way to coach manager, product managers is through the work. Like there's no magic to it, but like working with teams as they go through the process and asking those questions, that's developing the rigor and the toolkit so that they can go apply it the next time. Um, that's the best way to, to develop a team. Um, so that this is just a problem-solving methodology. And the problem-solving methodology is kind of a nice combination of product management, design, there's even some management consulting that's, that's come together into how that approach has been created. Um, and then just having teams do it over and over and over again. That's when people get good. In fact, what I'm really excited about um, a, a, a fresh product manager, uh, talented, and they're really promising. I just try to throw lots of different problems at them, like lots of different gnarly spaces, and have them get through the toolkit as fast as possible with as many revs as possible, because that's how you get seasoned. And then when you get, you, you're less likely to get thrown off course, you've got more notches on your belt, um, you ha you're able to deal with adversity more, you're able to have a deeper keel when stuff doesn't go your way. So like rapid seasoning for the best PMs is what I try to do. And that's why with like that product process actually, it's kind of a lot of slides, kind of a lot of questions. It actually might be a little overkill, but actually getting PMs who are early career to go through the whole process, even if it's on something small, we have interns at the sound right now, they're doing this, it's just get some rigor. So they know what's up. Go ahead. Yep. How about what you look for in a product manager? Oh, right. What it, yeah, the question is like, what do we look for from senior product managers? Great question. Um, we, have, um, we have some particular competencies at Asana that we care a lot about. And we have a career success guide, which is basically a big grid of like um, the scope of the type of project that you'd work on in these competencies and then what great looks like at each, each notch. Um, we don't have titles at Asana. But we do have different PMs work on different scope levels that are appropriate. So um, at a traditional senior product level manager, um, we're, the, the competencies are, um, let's see if I can remember them, um, empathy, which means you can do the upfront part of the, the double diamond in a snap. Um, velocity accelerant, meaning that the team moves faster because of you. Um, strategic innovator, meaning that your fingerprints are all over the product and that the, this thing wouldn't have gotten out the door or invented if it weren't for you. Um, team builder, meaning that PMs around you and your immediate scrum team um, is better because of you and you, and you are lifting up your cross-functional folks. Gosh, I feel like there's one more. Oh, ex ex execution. Um, oh, it, sorry, it is... Um, Executional ownership, um, which just means that you have an owner mentality. You think end to end. You don't let stuff slip through the cracks. Um, you know, that just great PMs sweat the details. Of, 
any interviewing aha moment um, that I'd like to share. Well, the thing, one of the characteristics I look for the most is humility. Humility is the most important thing as a PM because PMs are, are sleuths, right? We're on like a mission to find out how to solve problems. And if you go in there with an ego, you're gonna miss all these great things. But if you go in there with humility into the, the face of the problem, um, you're gonna learn all kinds of stuff. You're not gonna be biased by your, your previous position or some deck you just wrote or some presentation you just made. You're gonna be open to new data and it's gonna change your mind. You're gonna be looking for diverse ideas. Um, you, you still might be assertive and aggressive, but you're humble in learning because when you're learning about the customer problem, um, you're gonna, and you can really uncover these great discoveries with your team, your team is gonna be in the flow and you're gonna be delivering amazing things. So uh, have you ever run into an issue where you have to sort of justify between a short-term loss or long-term gain? And if so, how do you present that to other managers? Yeah, okay. So the, the question is like, I can just paraphrase here, but like if you measure everything that you do and stuff, some stuff comes back as losers, but you kind of think it's good anyway, you still do it. Um, at Asana, we've just taken a fresh look at how we implement our testing approach. And our testing approach is determined by a combination of UXR, a research team, and data science. Because there might be scrappier ways to learn using UXR, even though it's not statistically significant. And I think what we're trying to do is test, actually test a little less. Like less burden of A-B testing and having more conviction around what is right for the customer. If you're reading all your NPS verbatims, so who, me who measures NPS, net promoter score? If you're reading all those verbatims, which you totally should, and you see a theme around too hard to get started and you are able to iron out the particular part which stinks in the, in the experience, um, I would just launch it. Um, and some of your KRs might be around moving a particular metric and that you might save those for like the really big Harry unknown projects, but you want to free teams up to be able to go take actions and not necessarily have to test um, so that they can just get stuff out the door that's going to help customers out. Last All right, got an easy one. Um, thank you so much for sharing the piece on team flow. That was really valuable and helpful. Um, would you go back to the slide with your questions for the design review? Yeah. So by the way, my role is head of PM design and UXR, which is, pretty, which is a pretty fun role. Um, the design review. Yeah, perfect. Awesome, thanks. Sure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's it. Thank you very much. Th Appreciate thank you, it. Alex. That was really awesome. Oh, thanks. Oh. All right, so really, really interesting. So what we're gonna do now is one of the um, sort of popular moments in our, in our evening is I'm gonna ask everybody who has something they'd like to share to come over here. We have some really cool gifts tonight. We have product stack count notebooks and we have great Asana bags. And everybody who gets to share something gets a present until we run out, so hurry up. Um, and what I would like you to come and share is if you're looking for a job, if you're hiring, if you have a new product, you're looking for testers, if you're um, looking for friends, if you're looking for money, whatever it is that you'd like to share, come over here and you get 10 seconds to share it. So please don't be shy. Let's everybody gather up. Okay, awesome. You start first. 
Hi everyone, I'm Peng. Nice to meet you all here today. Uh, I come here with my very dear co-workers and friends. We are from Tradecraft, which is a professional accelerator. We are in product design track uh, with growth marketer and the business development tracks too. Sorry, I'm a little nervous. What do you need? Uh, so, um, we came from different backgrounds um, in the previous years, and now we are really passionate about UX, UI design. So we are, right now, we want to be, we are basically a piece of sponge. We want to learn as much as possible. And uh, we are really passionate to meet people, um, designers, managers, developers from the tech industry. So, you'll be over there? Yes, we are sitting over there. So we love to talk to and of you and uh, share any insights with you. Thank you. Very good. Hi, that was a great talk. Um, I have to thank my friend Allison Fowler from Promontory Brands. Huh? Okay, so uh, alchemize.me, I'm looking for clients. We have a company that will envision, create, and test ideas and validate them uh, in very short order at speed. Four to two week programs from a customer, uh, cu customer point of view. And so you'll have a proof of concept and a validated prototype to then get green light before significant investment. So that's alchemize.me or alchemizedgroup.com. And so I'll be here to mean, oh, uh, uh, wherever people are having a beer probably is a good idea. <laughs> Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Haim, and I am hiring product managers right now. I work at a company called Second Measure. Uh, we're revolutionizing competitive intelligence and market research. We're going to be the next Nielsen. Uh, we're hiring PMs who are interested in data and analytics-driven products. So come talk to me. I'll be up here. Where? Up, up here. I'll be in this area. I'm pretty tall. You can probably spot me. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Eric. I am uh, Alex's talent partner at Asana. We're hiring, I think you, you might have mentioned we're hiring for PMs. We are. A little bit. Uh, we're hiring across the board. Inge, design, um, user experience research, and I will be back near the leftover pizza. Hi, my name is Ryan Matthews. I just moved to the Bay Area. I'm looking to get into um, product management, and so I'll be talking to these guys. Um, but I'm also looking for friends. So if you guys uh, want to hang out, let me know. Um, and I'm also looking just to connect with other product managers and kind of learn what your day is like. So thank you. Where will you be? I will be right over here. Thank you. Hey, everyone. How are you? Uh, I'm from New York. I'm visiting. I'm here for the summer. I'm interning as a product designer at Airbnb. And um, I'm just here temporarily, but I would love to make friends here in the Bay Area. Um, I'm also working on a side project I've been working on for the last couple months. And I'm looking for, in terms of how to move it forward, uh, I've done usability testing, A-B testing, and also user research. And I'm looking to see how to push this forward. Uh, so if anyone has any advice, I would love to hear. And I will be around this vicinity. Thank you. Hey, my name is Spencer. Um, so we have a startup called We Do. It's basically a wellness intelligent platform, helps you kind of understand the correlation between what you do and how that affects you. Um, we're always looking for beta testers. Honestly, we're relatively new, always releasing features. So if you want to shoot me an email, spencer at wedo.com, we'll add you to our test flight or Google Play. Um, yeah, thank you so much. I'd love to get your guys' opinions on that. Thank you. Good evening. Great presentation, by the way. I'm Mike Zivin. I'm one of the product leads for Yelp, and we're happy to have everyone here tonight. We have a wide variety of PM roles open, and so if you'd love to learn more about what it's like working at one of the world's great consumer products, please come talk to me. I'll be right back there. Hi, everyone. My name is Belinda. I'm also here with Tradecraft. Um, 
Hi guys. <laughs> um, right now I'm leading a small team uh, to work on improving features for an app called Allo. It's an app, it's a social networking app for parents to make the process of asking and receiving favors um, easier because right now it's Process. We're doing some user research right now. So if anyone is a new parent um, or who has, who is to, a part of some kind of community um, at home and would love to give some feedback, we have some questions um, that we could schedule for later on, uh, probably a 30 minute interview. And it's just to get some general feedback on what the scene is like right now. So I will be in, in this section over here. Thank you. Hello, my name is Court. I work at Asana, I provide executive support to Alex Hood. And if you want to talk more about why Asana was voted best place to work, you can find me right over here. Hi, my name is Mayank. We're working on a startup called RentSpace. We're pretty much Airbnb for event spaces. And if you sign up with the referral code Asana, you'll get $10 off right away. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Any more shout outs? All righty. That was really cool. Um, OK, so next month, uh, we are having a, a, our monthly se series here uh, at the end of August. And our speaker is the chief product officer of Coinbase. So I'm pretty sure a lot of those tickets are going to sell out very quickly. Um, and if you want to participate, I encourage you to grab your ticket. I hope to see you very soon. Uh, in your inbox right now, you should have an email from us with a survey because we do measure the net promoter score of our events. We uh, productize everything we do at products that count. And so I would love if you could take one minute to fill it out. It really helps us make those events better. It also helps Alex. The average net promoter score I had shared with him is 50, and so he was like, I want to beat that score. So please help him out. Uh, we have the room here uh, until 9 p.m. There's leftover pizza, there's beer. Please hang out, network, get to know each other. Hope to see you next month. Thank you.